All right. Good evening. Yes. And thank you, Katrina, for that awesome, very thorough overview of what Barrow STEM can do for patients. Um, so my talk is going to be taking it um, kind of to the next step and figuring out how to make this happen for patients. Um, so um, my there's some experience. So I'm a heart failure PA with the advanced heart failure team um, at Prisma Health upstate in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, I think it's important, you know, so you can kind of take our experience and, um, you know, apply it to what your uh, clinic and hospital setup looks like. We are not a VAT or transplant center. Um, ourselves, but our sister hospital is. So a lot of what we do is kind of combing through a ton of the community heart failure, a third of our state, um, and kind of picking out those diamonds in the rough for um, advanced therapies, if eligible, or other things, other extra heart failure devices like Barostim. Um, so I was our self-declared <laughs> Barostim clinic coordinator. We started implanting just about a year ago now um, and we ramped it up kind of pretty quick. We got up to about 20 implants in the first six months and are still going strong. Um, so hopefully kind of a lot of the sort of takeaway pearls from my talk can help um, you sort of jumpstart um, clinics as well. So um, a lot of what I um, tried to work on in the beginning was just sort of retraining all of our providers' brains on how to incorporate this new incredible heart failure device into our normal workflow for patients. Um, so playing off of a lot of what Katrina talked about earlier with ideal patient selection um, and how to get there. Um, other things that we worked on was how to um, kind of optimize the workup for Barristim um, in terms of making sure we had a standard process for ordering the kind of preliminary carotid ultrasound and then the blood work with the NT Pro BMP to make sure that the patients were good surgical candidates and how to kind of keep track of all this when you're trying to launch with a whole bunch of patients all at once, um, how to keep everything organized. Um, and I did that with putting together some super high-tech Excel sheets um, that ended up being very helpful for making sure that patients didn't fall through the cracks as we kind of worked out our own um, kind of internal workflow. And then um, I also met with our clinic administration to kind of run through a lot of the things that um, don't necessarily jump to the forefront of your mind when you're trying to find the right patients for a new device, um, but also thinking about how to make Barristim Clinic a reality. Uh, a lot of the logistics in terms of making sure there was a room open um, to see these patients, figuring out how to schedule that, um, orienting all of our nurses, um, and working out a good schedule with CVRX um, for post-operative titrations. Um, and making sure that we were billing appropriately right off the bat. So diving into kind of developing those thought process triggers. Um, so I work through kind of screening all of the heart failure providers um, clinic schedules in advance of them seeing patients that day to help try to kind of highlight and cherry pick the patients um, and give those providers a heads up so that the device is at the forefront of um, their kind of conversation with the patient and not an afterthought that you're trying to squeeze in when you've already sort of used up your whole clinic visit. Um, so the first thing I look for when I open the chart, I just pull up the most recent echo, see if it's up to date within the year um, and check the ejection fraction. And um, looking for less than 35, if they're over that, just moving on. Um, other kind of favorable qualities um, that I'm tuning into are all kind of based off of the last heart failure clinic note, um, where our documentation is kind of standardized in our clinic to include all of these elements, uh, but looking to see if the patient has already been maximized on all um, kind of four core classes of GDMT, 
um, and hopefully titrated up to target doses as able, uh, making sure these patients have already gotten their ICD, if not CRT, um, checking to see if they need CRT. And then um, kind of taking a step back and looking at the patient overall. Um, kind of my center's biggest concern when we first started this is, well, you're saying we're looking for patients on maximal four drug GDMT who are still symptomatic. Those are the patients who we are working up for advanced therapies. And how does this fit in? And what we kind of learned is that it fits right there perfectly. Um, you know, those patients, the, these young patients um, who don't have a lot of other comorbidities and generally look like they fit the bill for transplant or LVAD, um, we are still going forward. We're getting the CPETs, we're getting the right heart caths, we're kind of taking all of that objective data together and deciding is this patient sick enough um, for LVAD or transplant, or are they too sick? Or have we kind of hit that sweet spot, that window of opportunity where we have tried everything in kind of our conventional arsenal, um, and now we're looking for something a little extra to help kind of continue to temporize these patients as early as possible in their heart failure course. I'm also taking a peek at the insurance coverage for the patients. Um, it, I know, kind of can depend regionally and state by state, um, but as we kind of implanted more and more patients in the beginning, um, kind of just took a run at it and submitted patients like one from every insurance plan and just started building some experience um, within our area, what was going to work and what was absolutely not going to work or ever um, get appealed at this point in time, um, just to help kind of make sure that we weren't going through a lot of effort for uh, patients who were going to inevitably hit um, kind of a wall with coverage. So things that would kind of turn me off looking at the chart um, to thinking about Barristan for the patient is of course, if it says patient's doing great, no complaints, then we can't improve upon perfection. So we just pat ourselves on the back for those ones. Um, but kind of more importantly is sort of really teasing out and making sure that we're not looking at class four patients um, and uh, making sure that we're not looking at patients with kind of overwhelming comorbidities um, who you know, are kind of debilitated to the point that it's probably not just heart failure and that we're not gonna fix you know, their end-stage renal on dialysis or their horrible COPD on liters and liters of oxygen around the clock. Um, if they're non-ambulatory for whatever reason, um, other active malignancies, pretty much if you walk in the room and the patient looks like palliative care would be appropriate, then this is, Barristan is not a pit stop on the way to palliative. Um, that person has unfortunately probably just missed their window. Um, other things to look out for would be um, history of carotid abnormalities that would kind of anatomically prevent implant, especially um, if they've had bilateral endarterectomies, um, if the patient is recently positive for drugs, or if they have no insurance whatsoever. Um, so we really drove that home with like all of our providers trying to get everyone on the same page um, with which patients we're targeting. Um, so at our center, um, for us, the uh, cardiac surgeon is implanting for us, and they've actually taken on the uh, majority of the kind of workload behind all of the insurance approvals and prior authorizations. Um, but what we do know, what we try to do is set it up for them to make it easy. So we kind of got together with the surgeon's office and CVRX and some other successful centers near us um, to put together a letter of medical necessity. So this is a dot phrase. So our EMR is epic. And so for us, we literally just type dot barostim and it populates this letter of medical necessity that includes everything that is needed um, if the patient needs um, additional kind of supporting information for their insurance approval. And so, Anytime that we are referring a patient for the workup, get the carotid ultrasound and blood work, and then go to see the CV surgeon, I make sure that this is in their chart in advance 
um, to help kind of streamline the process downstream for the cardiac surgeon's office. So something that we found once we got started is that we get so excited about this new technology and this new device. We talked about it way too much <laughs> and um, it got, you know, kind of uh, burdensome to address this in clinic when we're trying to move fast and we're getting farther and farther behind. So something that we looked at was how to kind of make it easier for the providers to continue to move efficiently through the clinic schedule while making sure that we um, kind of presented this therapeutic option to as many patients as possible. So um, we developed, um, what, so we have an excellent um, heart failure kind of clinic support staff. And so one of our nurses um, kind of took on a more sort of intensive role with Barristan Clinic and really uh, loves the device and all these patients. And so what we do is when the provider meets with the patient, we kind of, um, you know, float the idea out there, just, you know, kind of see. So, you know, you've been optimized on medical therapy, but you're telling me you still feel bad. You know, would you be interested in an additional procedure or device that could, you know, likely improve your heart failure symptoms? And if the patient, you know, jumps in, absolutely, yes, tell me more. That's when um, we have them uh, check out and meet with our, one of our heart failure nurses who does a deep dive for all of the kind of more um, specific questions and really have the quality time with the patient so they, you know, feel heard and get all the information they want. So CVRX loaded our clinic up with all kinds of helpful um, kind of models and um, brochures, little videos, um, uh, samples of the device, kind of everything you could ask for to give the patient a really well-rounded picture um, of what Barristim is and how it works, just like Katrina kind of presented for us. And um, we also kind of take that opportunity to set some expectations for the patient. So, um, Baristem is a little bit different from, you know, a basic pacemaker or defibrillator that's implanted and, you know, often never needs adjustment. So after a Baristem implant, it does require a titration. Um, and so we wanted to be upfront with our patients and make sure that they were, um, you know, kind of prepared and committed and excited to come see us a little bit more frequently um, to get a comprehensive titration. Um, and then another one of the resources um, that CVRX gave us was this concierge service. And so every patient who we've talked to about Barristem and has been through an education session, um, we hand them these cards, like you can see here, to um, kind of get registered and connect directly with CVRX um, to help kind of field any additional um, questions that the patient may have while they're sort of making their decision. Okay, so this was my kind of first tracker that I put together to help process the patients as they're moving through the workup um, and getting closer to implant. So this is where um, if the patient was very interested and it, um, they want to proceed with the workup, um, the, either the providers or the education nurse adds their name to this list. We take a look at their insurance coverage and start plugging in the different pieces of the workup. And I check back on this and update it as we go. And once everything's done with the ProBMP and the carotid ultrasound has resulted and looks fine, that's when we proceed with the um, referral to cardiovascular surgery. Um, and this helped us really kind of map out our time from discussion to implant, um, which was, uh, you know, a big question up front. And so for our center, it kind of works out um, that the patients are usually implanted within the month um, or six weeks or so. So how do we do um, our implant day? Our surgeons reserve one day a month and all the patients who were interested um, and got through the workup in time are all added onto that one date. And then we get the list of patients 
um, and set up a titration schedule. So how our Barrett STEM clinic works, and I think it's not necessarily you no know, one size fits all, but this is what we found has worked pretty efficiently at our center. So we have dedicated um, every other Wednesday afternoon in our clinic, and that's our Barrett STEM clinic time. And this is when we have the room on reserve, the nurses on reserve, um, and also room on the provider schedule so that we're not scrambling to work these patients in every time they need to be titrated on short notice. So our scheduler maps out all the titration visits all at once and the patient gets um, the schedule up front. So we're all on the same page. So the patient gets a post-op wound check at one week with the cardiac surgeon, and then they come see us at two weeks. So the patients are usually set to one milliamp in the OR, and then they're sent home, given time for everything to kind of heal up and settle down um, and make sure um, their you know, incisions are looking nice. And then they come see us to start titration. So at our center, we're titrating every two weeks um, and going up usually by one to two milliamps at each visit. So our first visit, um, we pair this device check and titration um, with a visit with one of the APPs um, to check in with the patient after implant. And oftentimes we're seeing um, kind of remarkable diuretic adjustments up front as the patient um, starts to adapt to the new device. And then the next few visits, we have the patient come back just for the device check and titration with the CBRX rep and one of our heart failure nurses. Because um, there isn't really a ton going on at these visits other than the device adjustments. Um, so we kind of remove that from our provider clinic to help everything sort of move a little smoother. And then at their last titration visit, and some patients, you know, we can end up titrating quickly within a few visits, or maybe they require a few extras, but on average, five visits usually gets the job done. And so we check back in with them at the end of titration, um, where their device settings should be stable now for the foreseeable future. And we look to see if there's anything else we can do to maximize our um, GDMT for the patient, if there's room now to start or go up on your ARB or ARNI, um, or um, a lot of our patients are requesting to kind of go through cardiac rehab again now that they have a little more energy. Um, so kind of lots of different areas to revisit. And then um, three months after the titration where all these new you know, neural hormonal balances have time to just kind of settle down and even out for the patient again and get a new baseline, that's when we're looking at repeating um, assessments like the echo, the labs, and the six minute walk. After that, the patient um, is just seen every six months um, to check the battery life and they should be good to go. So this I think is a really good little visual of what um, a titration schedule looks like. And so at the first several visits, we're not changing baseline GDMT. I kind of think of the Barristan titration as like a titration of ARNI um, or a diuretic in and of itself. So kind of focusing on that one variable and optimizing it before revisiting where they were maximized on GDMT um, as tolerated before. So um, I'm also tracking the titration schedule for our post-implant tracker. And so this is where our scheduler and I kind of get together and lay out, just map out the visits up front every two weeks for the patient, um, get them booked in clinic and kind of check these off as we go um, and help kind of anticipate when the patient will need to be seen after titration for follow-up testing. And again, this is another way to help make sure that the patients are not falling through the cracks and that they're kind of progressing as planned. So it's a really good kind of overview of your whole program um, as you add more and more patients. So who's done and who's in active titration and new implants. 